So we just went through the mechanism for the formation of the acetal. Now I want you to go through the mechanism for the formation of the ketal on your own. Notice that the only difference in these mechanisms is the fact that this hydrogen is present in the acetal and it's a methyl group in the ketone. But notice that throughout the mechanism that we just went through for the formation of the acetal, that hydrogen didn't play a role at all in the reaction. So the mechanism for the formation of the ketal will be virtually identical to the mechanism for the formation of the acetal, except anywhere we wrote hydrogen, we're going to be writing CH3. So what I want you to do is I want you to go through the mechanism for the ketal on your own, and during the course of the mechanism, During the course of the mechanism, you're going to form an intermediate that looks like this, where you have a carbon bonded to an alcohol, an ether, and your two carbon-containing groups. And this functional group is what we call a hemiketal. So you should see this intermediate form during the course of your mechanism. But keep in mind that your hemiketal, your hemiacetals, these are not products. Your final products that we isolate are the acetals and ketals, but they're significant intermediates that we form about halfway through the mechanism. So you should be able to work through the mechanism for the formation of a ketal like the one on the previous page that we looked at. You should also be able to look at a mechanism like this one, where we have a cyclic ketone in the presence of a molecule of ethanol and sulfuric acid in order to make a ketal that looks like this. Make sure you go through this mechanism on your own. All of the chemistry happens at the carbon of the carbonyl as you go throughout the entire mechanism. Sometimes in these reactions we use an organic acid that's called paratoluene sulfonic acid and it looks like this. And this is a compound that is an organic acid. It's used a lot in organic reactions. It has a little bit better solubility than sulfuric acid. And sometimes this acid is called HOTS, or we can show it with the proton, like that. So sometimes that's an organic acid that you might see. We also might use diols for our acids. So sometimes we use ethylene glycol, which is an ingredient in antifreeze. We can use 1,3-propane diol as our alcohol in the reactions, so that instead of using two equivalents of the alcohol like we would up here, we can get away with using a single equivalent of these reactions. So as an example, if I had a ketone like this one, I could treat this ketone with ethylene glycol in the presence of sulfuric acid. And the product that I would make out of that reaction is this one here. Where this is the carbon of the carbonyl, this is the carbon of the carbonyl there. That is the carbon where all of the chemistry happens. Make sure you can go through this mechanism on your own. Similarly, if I had a molecule of acetone if I treated this molecule of acetone with 1,3-propane diol in the presence of sulfuric acid, the product that I would make out of this reaction looks like this. Where this carbon right here is the carbon of my carbonyl, and in my product, it's this carbon right here that is the carbon of my ketal. So in both cases, I have a ketal functional group where I have a carbon that's bonded to two carbon-containing groups and two ethers. And just like this one here, make sure you can go through the mechanism for the formation of this compound on your own. And it's important to work through all of these different types of mechanisms. There's a lot of variations. A lot of things look a little bit differently. Make sure you can work through all of these mechanisms. And I will tell you that these are some of my most favorite reactions in the entire organic chemistry course.
One of the best ways to probe your understanding of these reactions is to work the reactions in reverse. So if I have an acetal or a ketal, and I treat my acetal or ketal with H3O+, so water and acid, usually heat, I'm going to convert that acetal or ketal back to my aldehyde or my ketone, depending on the functional group that I have. So as an example, if I had this ketal and I treated it with H3O plus and heat, the product that I would make out of this reaction is my ketone plus my diol, like so. Once again, this carbon right there is the carbon of my ketal functional group. It's bonded to two ethers and two carbons, and it's the same carbon in my carbonyl. That is where all the chemistry happens. I want you to go through this mechanism on your own. And this is a mechanism that will be part of the homework.